Deep in the heart of the San Bernardino Mountains lies an old structure that once played an important role in detecting wildfires within the backcountry. Butler Peak Lookout was just one of many fire lookouts that were located all over the country. Today, we journey here to discover the unique role they played in America's history and the potential they may have to help us in the future. here today deep in the heart of Los Angeles National Forest and I'm going to be exploring this abandoned fire tower. At the height of their construction there are over 5,000 fire towers and today there's less than 200 and even fewer of them are manned. To really get a good idea of where this story starts though we have to go all the way back to the summer of 1910. It was during this time that one of the biggest wildfires ever recorded occurred. It was called the Big Blow Up, or Devil's Broom Fire, and it burned an area the size of Connecticut. That's over three million acres in just two days. The fire was most likely started by lightning, and during its peak incineration period, up to 70 mile per hour gusts were recorded. That's almost hurricane force winds that were produced from the roaring flames, which leveled trees, towns, and homes which resulted in over 85 people perishing. Although this tragedy was terrible, it served as a sort of wake-up call to the newly established Forest Service, which was tasked in 1905 to manage America's public lands. And there was a lot of land to manage. With this recent event being on everyone's minds, the focus became on fire detection and suppression. And what better way to do that than to build a tower out in the middle of nowhere. My name is Stephen Friddle. I'm up here probably three times a month. This particular shift is an eight hour shift because of the drive time to get up here and to get back. What do you do up here? We take a look for smoke and if smoke is spotted, we triangulate that with the Osborne machine, which I'll go into in just a minute. And then we radio in the coordinates to um, the San Bernardino Fire Department. So this is called the Osborne machine. These were designed in the late 1800s. They were used um, basically in every fire outlook tower and they are still used today um, and still very useful. So this particular one was built in 1926. The tower itself has been here since 1936. If I were to see smoke, for instance, due east, if you will. I would line up my crosshairs with where I see the smoke. And I'm either going to line it up here and just visualize it from here, or sometimes I'll use this just to get really more lined in. But normally I can use just the crosshairs. Then I estimate from this center point this represents Butler Peak, where we are right now. And on this side of the metal piece, there are inch marks from zero inches to 10 inches. Each inch represents two miles. So for instance, when we had the fire on that summit just over there, I would report that in at 110 degrees and six miles out, which is right at three inches on this piece right here 
and that would put me at Snow Summit. And the peak right over there is Snow Summit. So I would radio in 110 degrees, six miles out, and also mention the landmark, which is Snow Summit. I would report the smoke, what it looks like, how much smoke there is, the color of the smoke, how quickly it's spreading. And from there, San Bernardino would dispatch uh, either trucks or aircraft or helicopters or everything, <laughs> depending on what they have uh, in stock at the moment. The closest fire was right down here in 2007. It didn't reach up to the top No, here. the reason it didn't reach up here is because of what you see in this picture. So that picture shows the plane as it was flying. The science be behind firefighting and the understanding of fires and what to do with them when they're burning has changed over the years. Used to be that fire was always bad. You wanted to put any fire out, as opposed to just letting it do what it does. Fire science, again, across the United States has changed. And more recently, it's been, you know, certainly up here in the San Bernardino mountain area, because it's so populous, there's a lot of businesses, a lot of homes, that kind of thing. If we see fire, we are going to want to put it out quickly because it will burn really quick. Plus, being in a dry area like Southern California, it will pick up and burn thousands and thousands of acres, possibly within days. Otherwise, if you're talking about wilderness, you may just want to let it burn and let nature do what it's going to do. From my understanding, a controlled burn is like a very delicate exercise. It is. And then they have to cancel them on the spot all the time because if there's like just a sudden change in the wind direction, it can quickly get right. out of control. Because there are so many factors that feed into the fire. We take temperature old school twice a day and relative humidity using this thermometer. So I'll take a morning reading and an afternoon reading. And then to get relative humidity, I'll use distilled water and wet this spin this about 45 seconds, take a reading again on my dry bulb, which is here, and my wet bulb, which is here, and then that will tell me what the relative humidity is. So I call that in in the mornings to San Bernardino Fire, so they, they, take, that, um, they take the reports from Firewatch Towers. Um, then in addition to that, I also measure wind speed using this instrument. So this will tell me when wind speed is zero to 10, or if it's super strong, then I'll cover up the hole here, and then I will read from the right-hand side. So with the hole uncovered on the left-hand side for low wind, with it covered for high wind. Imagine coming out here after that great fire, after being tasked with the responsibility that you were supposed to keep watch of this whole area and not let anything like that happen again. I bet it weighed on them pretty heavily. What's interesting is way back then, if they saw, usually there was two or more people stationed up in one of these towers. And for one of them, if they saw the smoke out there, they would try to send one person down there on a horse and try to block the fire from spreading. It's comforting to know that we don't practice the same fire suppression techniques that we used to. Some fire is good. However, the act of intense fire suppression over the course of a hundred years has negatively impacted our forests. Native American tribes used to have their own prescribed burns all the time. And then as early as 1850, they could be shot for doing prescribed burns in their hunting and gathering grounds. If too much undergrowth is allowed to accumulate over the years, if it's left unchecked with all this climate change that we're having, then we will definitely be seeing larger fires in the future. With modern technology, you might think that it's easier to just use a plane to scout the fire instead of seeing a person, but I think having somebody up on a watchtower like that is super beneficial, especially in a place as remote as this. Climate change is becoming more present than ever with each passing year. Ironically, what may have led to the cause of more destructive fires, we may end up benefiting from the watchtowers. Even if we don't utilize these towers in the future, at least they make a pretty view with a lot of history. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and check out my Salton Sea video, where we have an epic hike, explore forgotten town, and have a whole lot of fun.